Hello, and welcome to Agrosa Physics. Today is day 118, and what I'd like to do today is have a practice day. And what we're going to do is calculate the resistance of a number of different light bulbs using the power rating on the light bulb and the voltage that is supplied to it. Now, the reason we're going to do this is because the light bulb has a resistance value that's constant and it will change based on how it's connected in the circuit. In another day or two, what we're going to do is start discussing series and parallel circuits. And in a series and parallel circuit, the voltage may not be 120 volts supplied to each light bulb. In fact, it could be a lot less. So the light bulbs may have to share 120 volts between them. In that case, what will happen is the resistance values will be the same but the current flowing through them and ultimately the voltage will be different. Well, if the voltage is different and the current is different, what that will do is produce different power ratings. So the power ratings listed on a light bulb are assuming that the light bulb is plugged into a 120 volt power source, the outlet. If it's not connected in that way, what will happen is it will be much dimmer. In fact, what we'll find is that in some cases, the lower rating light bulb will actually be the brightest. But for now, I want you to be able to calculate the resistance of each light bulb, and that's based on the rating that it says for the manufacturer, which is 120 volts. If you know the power and you know the voltage, you should be able to use one of the equations in order to find the resistance. Now, that um, being stated, what we can do is actually calculate the energy usage leaving a 100 watt bulb or a 75 watt bulb um, on for a number of hours per day. And we can compare that to um, the amount of money it would cost to keep that light on. One of the things that I do at home is um, constantly turn off lights when my kids leave them on. And the reason being is when they leave the lights on, we're using energy that we don't need to. And by using energy we don't need to, we're wasting money. So. What we'll do today is calculate resistance values that we'll then be able to use in whatever type of situation that we're faced with. The resistance of the light bulbs will remain constant, and the voltage and current flowing through them will be, the, will be what changes. Now, of course, with a light bulb, the temperature does change. In fact, the temperature goes up as the light bulb heats up. But when you have the power rating, that's assuming the power at the temperature that's uh, consistent. If you touch an incandescent light bulb after it's been on for a few seconds, you could burn your hands. So just be careful when you're um, changing a light bulb that had just blown out. If it blows out um, when you just turn it on, it shouldn't be too hot. But if it blows out after a few uh, minutes or a number of hours uh, being left on, what will happen is that glass on the outside of the light bulb will actually be quite hot. So just be careful when you're doing that at home. So let's take out the whiteboard and do some sample problems now. And that's it for today. I thank you. Now, when we use light bulbs, they're rated at 60 watts or 40 watts or 25 watts based on the voltage input of 120 volts. So incandescent lights, especially, are rated based on taking all 120 volts when the voltage passes through. What we're going to end up doing is changing the configuration of many of these light bulbs um, with sample problems over the next couple of days. So what I want you to realize is that the resistance of each of these light bulbs is something that's going to stay constant. The voltage passing through it and the current passing through it is something that can change. Now the first thing is the symbol for a light bulb is going to look like that. Now a light bulb is effectively a resistor, but we have a specific symbol. So this is a lamp or a light bulb, and this is the resistor itself. A lamp in a, uh, is effectively a resistor, um, but if we have a specific um, symbol, we use that. Now you also have a symbol that could be a variable power supply, and typically you'll have an arrow pointing to it, um, where you can change that value. In our reference table, we have the variable power supply 
um, symbol looks something like that. Now that just means the resistance can change. Now if I have a 100 watt bulb, that means the voltage is going to be 120 volts when it passes through it. And if I want to find the resistance that will be constant, I need the version of my power equation that has voltage and resistance in it. It's not P equals VI. It's not um, P equals I squared R. In fact, it's V squared over R. And this is going to be the equation we use for each of the light bulbs we look at. We're going to use these resistance values when we do sample problems with series and parallel circuits a little later. Now the voltage is 120, so 100 watts equals 120 volts squared all over R. So what is the resistance of a 100 watt light bulb? Well, let's see. 120 squared divided by 100. And I'm going to get 144 ohms. That's a 100 watt bulb. How's a 75 watt bulb different? Well, the voltage is still 120 volts. The equation is the same, but instead of the 100, we put in a 75. Voltage is the same, because we're going to plug it into a wall, and we have 120 squared divided by 75, and we get 192 ohms. And you'll see a pattern as the value for the power goes down, 60 watts, V is 120 volts, I'm not going to waste your time plugging in the numbers again, but it's going to be 120 squared divided by 60. You get 240 ohms. And we'll just do one more. We'll do 40 watts, 120 volts, 120 squared divided by 40. You have 360 ohms. So the 100 watt bulb is 144 ohms, the 75 watt bulb is 192, the 60 watt bulb is 240, and the 40 watt bulb is 360 ohms. Now if they're actually connected to 120 volts, which is what the case is when you plug it into the wall, then the 100 watt bulb is the brightest and the 40 watt bulb is the dimmest. So the power is directly related to the brightness. And state assessments love to ask questions about which light bulb is brightest when connected in a certain circuit. So just be aware that when you calculate power, you're going to be finding the brightness as well because there's a direct relationship between the two. But when you connect them properly, which is connecting them to a wall outlet, um, and they each draw 120 volts as they should, as is stated on the, um, on the labeling, then the bigger the, the power, the brighter the bulb. So a 100-watt bulb is brighter than a 75, which is brighter than a 60, which is brighter than a 40. On the other hand, the resistance values go up as we have lower power ratings. So when we plug in a 40-watt bulb in a series circuit, we're going to use 360 ohms as our resistance. 60-watt bulb is going to be 240, 75 is going to be 192, and a 100-watt bulb we're going to use is 144 ohms. You're going to be expected to remember this as we move forward. So make sure you keep note of this chart, if you will, um, in your notes. All right, we discussed the resistance of the light bulbs, but if we plug them into the outlet, how much current is flowing through each? Now, the equations V equals IR, and we have 120 volts. The current and for a 100 watt bulb, we had 144 ohms. So 120 divided by 144 gets me 0 0.833 amperes. And we'll do two more. We'll do a 60. So 60 watt bulbs, this is a 100 watt bulb. 60 watt bulb, 120 volts equals I. And a 60 watt bulb has 240 ohms. So 120 divided by 240 gets us 0 0.5 amperes. Now finally, let's do a 25 watt bulb. And 120 squared divided by 25, that was 576 ohms. So 25 watts, 120, I, 576 ohms. 
120 divided by 576, I get 0 0.21, we'll say, amps. It was 2083. So the current through these light bulbs is not going to be um, very, very large compared to the 15 amp circuits. Remember, a lot of these lights are going to be, or lamps are going to be connected to circuit breaker with about 15 amps of uh, capacity. The toaster we practiced before was 10 amps. Of course, the flashlight I made up was about 9, but the 15 amps is not going to be tripped by these regular light bulbs. They're usually tripped. The circuit breakers will be tripped when you plug in bigger devices like a toaster, things that draw more, um, more current. Um, another common example, example is a hair dryer. That's another one that draws a lot. Um, but these right here, pretty small currents. You'd have to add up to 15 amps before the circuit was tripped. So you could turn on all the lights on a circuit and typically not have any trouble um, with the circuits tripping.